as banker and tradesman, keep statistics on various sales of houses in different towns. And they show that the drop in the price of a single family home from 2007 to 2008 in Wayland was practically the worst in eastern Massachusetts. Do you know why this is? Uh, well, in order to know why it would happen is you'd have to interview a number of people and a number of real estate agents. And I've done some of that. So some of it's anecdotal. But what I'm hearing is that people look at the town, they see the history of overrides. Wayland has acquired a reputation of being, uh, well, fast on the trigger with overrides. They can expect more in the future. The tax rate is 16.38. It's very high. And people see that as, as, a, as a metric. They also know that there's a high school issue. A high school will eventually have to be dealt with one way or the other. That's going to be very expensive. And uh, so they know that's going to have to be funded. But uh, it will have to be funded with a debt exclusion override, which is another type of an override. So one way to look at it is, is that you only have so much bandwidth when it comes to money. People only have so much money that they can spend on taxes. And if we used up all of that bandwidth on five overrides in seven years, how much is actually left to support other large projects. So uh, I, I, would, I would not hesitate to say that on people's minds, they're probably looking at Wayland and saying Wayland's got a number of structural problems having to do with their high taxation rate, their infrastructure needs to be repaired, and it's going to cost a lot of money to move into the town of Wayland. Perhaps that is a negative. Alan, you partially answered the next question, but I'm going to ask it again so that you can uh, perhaps summarize it. What could Wayland government do to confront the economic crisis facing our citizens and town? Well, I think uh, I've tried to cover this earlier in other questions, but I think uh, the way I look at it is that we should be more citizen-centric rather than government-centric or services-centric. We should care more about the survivability of Wayland citizens and ask people to, to, uh, to basically do with less services and not burden its citizens with, uh, with extra taxes. Alan, there are two debt exemption ballot questions facing voters in the upcoming April election. What are those two debt exemption questions, and what is your position on them? Right. Uh, let me answer question two first, and I'll do one second, okay? Question two is more of an infrastructure type, uh, having to do with building repairs, which I'm all for, by the way. If, uh, if the roof is leaking, you, you have to fix the roof, because it'll, it'll be more to fix the roof later on if you don't. And so we have certain, uh, certain repairs that we have to take care of. We also have uh, to buy an ambulance, and uh, there's nothing more important than life or death services. I'm all for that. Another one is a $200,000 uh, expenditure to improve another type of infrastructure in town, which is the database of the assessment system. Uh, there could be nothing more important than making sure that everybody in town is on a level playing field in the way they are assessed. No one should pay more than they should. No one should pay less than they should. It's not reasonable to ask people to pay taxes or more taxes if the assessment system is broken. I cannot urge you enough to care about this $200,000 in getting this problem fixed. Now, on question one, it has to do with the high school. And this is the next step in the high school building uh, uh, project. And uh, it's going to be an assessment study to see what actually needs to be done. There'll be a 60% reimbursement. There's already monies that were spent in the past that will be associated with that. So after it's all over, you're probably looking at somewhere between three and four hundred thousand dollars. So it's, a, it's an appreciable amount of money, but I think it's well spent because we have to deal with that problem at some point. It's going to, it's going to get us and we have to deal with it. Now, should it be a repair? Should it be a modification? Should it be a replacement? That's what this money is going to help us understand. So we should absolutely take this to the next step and I absolutely urge you to vote for number one and number two and I will be doing that. Thank you, Alan. Recently, the chairs of the Board of Selectmen, Finance Committee, School Committee, Planning Board, and High School Building Committee, along with the two highest paid town employees, the town administrator and school superintendent, gave a private audience to a Wayland Political Action Committee, but refused to meet with the public. What is your take on this? Well, my, my take on it is when I first saw the invitation, which was forwarded to me via email, it wasn't sent to me directly, but forwarded to me, was I wanted to understand whether the meeting was truly open to the public or not. So I uh, usually don't invite myself to parties, but I did this time. 
And uh, what I received back was an answer, a polite answer, which was, well, uh, we don't have enough room in the house and the, the private residence. It can only be for, uh, for the uh, active volunteers of Save Our Services who was hosting the party. And I understood that. But then at that point, what I did was I wrote a letter back to a Fred Turkington town administrator and to the Board of Selectmen. And I asked them, I said that this meeting has a lot of firepower. It's got five of the most powerful elected or appointed officials, plus two of the high, most highly paid uh, town employees. It was held during working hours. And uh, if you have this much firepower, why wouldn't you just hold this meeting at Town Hall in the large hearing room for the other 13,000 Whalen citizens and ask SOS to show up there? If you looked at the agenda of the meeting, it was tantamount to a State of Wayland meeting. That firepower and that agenda of that meeting should have been held for you, the citizens, and I still do. I still think it should have. Is it going to be held for the citizens before the election? Not before the election. Uh, on March 9th, uh, my question finally did surface at the Board of Selectmen, and uh, Michael Tickner spoke to it. He's chairman of the Board of Selectmen. And what he said effectively was uh, that uh, it would be impractical to get those seven people together again between now and April 7th, there wasn't enough time, which really goes to the, to the idea that if they would have done it first for the Wayland citizens, they could have killed two birds with one stone and not have to have done it twice at all. I would urge the Board of Selectmen in the future, when they see that type of a meeting with that many people and that much firepower, think of the citizens first. But the, the second point that he made was that if he held the meeting between now and April 7th, that would be highly political. Well, probably, it probably would be based on, on what's transpired. But remember, SOS is a political action committee. It's been registered in the past. It may be still at this moment. And uh, the moment that they walked into that house in front of a political action committee, it was a political meeting. So what's the difference? Alan, don't these seven people meet in different meetings almost every Monday night? Why is it so difficult to get these people together when they're already in the building, the town building? on a Monday night? Well, I don't think I can answer that question because I think you'd have to answer that question and ask them. I don't have an answer to that. I'm sorry.